Last week on The Season. Well, first day of class was all right. It's way different than high school. This is, this is all just new to me. I'm still trying to take it in. You've got to be willing to get up and do it over and over and over and over again. And that commitment lasts long after you set it in the mood you set it in. Because right now it's real easy in this room. I really want to be great for you, Coach. You're going to and be. It's great for me to you, Coach. I love you. Man. I love you too, man. I appreciate that opportunity. Love you, man. So we'll do it from a couple things from both of them. Look at him cut, blocking the linebackers right there. You have to visualize all these things are going to happen. What do y'all think about this new stadium? Looks pretty nice. New video boards. Keep your head up. We win together, we lose together, and we move forward together. Nothing conjures up memories of football quite like the smell of fresh-cut grass. Ole Miss is famed for her glorious greenery, so the switch back to sod was only natural. It's time to renew the tradition rooted in Vaught Hemingway Stadium. The field is ready, the paint is dry, and football is back in Oxford. Alright, let's up with me. Chin up just a little bit. What do you think? Mean, huh? I can make it mean. You wanna do it mean? Yeah. Chin up. I like it, man. We're gonna do one more and then you're good. I'm trying to make my eyes bigger and yeah, you're good. crying at the same time. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That one's the one. That, that last one was awesome. Sweetie Shot Isaac Gross, football program cover. It's going to be unbelievable. You guys got to check it out. We do, I think, six program covers, six, seven program covers a year. Isaac's is going to be lit. It's going to be one of the best ones you've ever seen. Howdy, howdy. Coming up on the season. He sent all the way back to the 25-yard line by Isaac Gross. That is what allows him to be so disruptive, his first step. He was having problems and he just couldn't rebound. He said, God, please don't take it from me yet. Handoff, hit in the backfield, in trouble, dropped to the 18 is Jalen Hurd. There's blood in the water. He's hit. He sent all the way back to the 25-yard line by Isaac Gross. Isaac Gross, number 94, did a Fabulous job of penetrating. He just blew past the center and the left guard so fast, they didn't even know what, what went by. Oh gosh, I mean, people don't realize uh, how quick that he is. I mean, he comes off the ball fast, and it's not, there's never any, it's always a million miles an hour. And you may have got your two steps down before he gets his three going in the backfield. That is what allows him to be so disruptive, his first step, because uh, as it's well documented, you know, he played undersized at 240 pounds his whole career. And um, for him to even be able to hang in there with some of those 300, 320 pounders, it all starts with his speed and quickness off the ball. Currently, Isaac Gross in on that defensive line, somebody that we're going to talk about, 94. 235 pounds he was quoted at this week. Boy, quickness is something that he'll utilize inside. I think about Alabama um, at home two years ago. Uh, right before the half, he had about three tackles in a row. Uh, behind the line of scrimmage and I remember talking to my brother after the game and he said now tell me why that guy wasn't starting he said that guy's one of the best players I've seen. Gonna hand it off and dropped in the backfield is the tailback Derek Henry. Henry is hammered by Isaac Gross who got great penetration. You learn that you want to attack first. Being being the first one out the ball you know I get to make the play first. 
There's a handoff to Scott, and he is plastered at the 45-yard line by Isaac Gross. Did anybody touch the junior from Batesville? Coach Womack actually said to uh, Coach Freeze on the headset, he said, are we going to stop him here? He said, oh, yeah, Isaac Gross is going to make the tackle in the backfield. And sure enough, we ran it. Angel stunt, and Isaac snapped his head across the guard's face and made it for a, a two-yard loss or whatever it is. Land Shark defense fins up for Isaac Gross. My senior year at Georgia, we were playing him, and I remember my roommate, Aaron Murray, coming over the sideline just saying, they're so quick, and it's centered around Isaac Gross. However, in the fall of 2014, Gross's first step would lead him not to a quarterback, but to recovery. Robert Kandichi's partner in defensive tackle, Isaac Gross, who led the team in sacks last season, did not make the trip. He is back in Oxford rehabbing a neck strain. They hope to have him back next week, Reese. He was having problems. He just couldn't, he couldn't rebound. He couldn't perform. Uh, and that's when we kind of investigated it further, got some new, new uh, imaging, uh, followed up with some other physicians, and, and they decided, hey, he's at the point now where he needed to have surgery. It was a disc, and they had the, uh, they had the mold back, you know what I'm saying? When they put the uh, replacement disc in there, they had the mold back, fused back together. He basically had a, had a fusion at uh, C4 and C5, um, and they also did a little disectomy at that level too. After surgery, it was like six months or so before they said I could touch a weight again. So I instantly, like the day I got home, Body weight, body weight training. I started doing push ups. I was like, I gotta put this weight on. I gotta, I gotta come back stronger and faster and bigger than ever just because, you know, not, I got a serious injury. You know, about the eight week mark, we started doing some more aggressive lifts from the floor. And then at 12 weeks is when he really started, started lifting hard and doing you know, all the lifts that we have normal guys do. He is, you know, loading his spine every play. You know, he, he's taking a load every play. So it is, it is different, you know, compared to what position you play. I normally watch film with the guys, but I asked Coach Kiffin, I said, Coach, you know, uh, since uh, I'm, I really ain't gonna be practicing, do you mind if I uh, lift weights? And I said, Isaac, that's totally fine if you wanna do that, you know. Um, for one, it's good for his sanity, you know, to keep him going, but but also the fact that he's putting on muscle and weight and, uh, and he looks better than he ever has. We gotta get him, baby, we gotta get him right. I'm on both sides, I'm neutral. I want the offense to be great, I want the defense to be great. I want the boy to block, I want the boy to catch the ball. You're definitely right, I want the defense to hit some all day long. We called him Coach Gross in, in spring. He was, uh, he was the vocal leader of our football team. We'll continue to be that. People respect him, they're gonna follow him. When a young man goes out to practice and has to be out there for a couple hours and has no responsibility in the practice as far as himself, it allows his mind to really open up and see what else is going on. For him to stand back there, especially behind the offense and all those team drills, to see all that and, and to be able to go through that for a couple hours a day, you know, for the entire spring really, um, I just think that that he was exposed to so much more. Go Jack! Go Jack! My DB being too physical! I ain't 17! You look so boy! You can't let that happen no more! Hit something for me, 14. Let's go, 17. Hey G, you better hold the ball today, G! Somebody has a question, he's there for an answer. I mean, he's always he's paying attention. He wants to be out there just as bad as Everybody else does. He wants to be out there helping, teaching people learning. We'd be watching practice uh, film afterwards and this and that, and every single play here was Isaac, you know, doing this or had this kind of commentary, if you would, in the background. And uh, he's standing with Coach Freeze. I thought he was assistant head coach there for a minute. Yeah, yeah. I like both of them. JP, you can't miss that. Punch it in, offense. Get some points. I think our players love having him back there, having him in there. And when he gets in the huddle, it'll be the same thing. I don't know if I've ever coached a kid more competitive than Isaac Gross. Uh, more determined, loves to play the game, emotional, just uh, a guy that you want on your football team. We out here, SEC game, good sick boys out here. Ain't nothing like that land shark D, man. Ain't nothing like that last shot, D. Mississippi boys here, and, and we ready for action. All day, every day, Mississippi boys, baby. Mississippi boys. My biggest strength, I believe, is putting that Mississippi on my chest. You know, I feel like every time, every down, every game, I, you know what I'm saying, I feel like I got something to prove. I feel like I got something to prove for Mississippi. I've just been proud ever since he signed. I mean, I always just tell me he wanted, he always wanted to play at Ole Miss, and he wanted me and Tamario to come play with him. He really down for Mississippi and just, I can just tell being out there on the field with him, 
just the passion and, and being from Mississippi, you respect uh, Mississippi players, and that's the first person I respect when I got here. He's one of those guys that he sees somebody else doing it. He's like, "All right, put that weight on. I put that. I got to do this now." You know what I mean? He doesn't let anybody else show him up on effort, or you know what I mean? He comes to work every day. Now that he's back, it's just um, I can't even describe it. It's just a motivation thing. Once that was taken away from him, and he knew what he had to do to get back to be able to play again. Um, then from there on, it, it was no issue. I was taken out of it. You know, I, uh, I love this sport. And this sport changed, it changed me. I said, God, please don't take it from me yet. Like, you know, this is something I love to do. This is something, you know, I feel destined about doing. So with that being said, it's just a flame lit inside me that I don't feel in no time soon will be burnt out. He gets the cook and he's hammered at the 40. He loses yardage, a three-yard loss there. It's Isaac Gross, welcome back. The senior from Batesville, Mississippi, dropped it. When we return on The Season. I throw it to DK, Jay. Hey, you got to throw it to DK, Jay. Playing at home is always special, but with the new Vaught-Hemingway expansion, there was another level of excitement in the air. For me personally, it is awesome to see how the stadium looks all closed in with all the new bells and whistles, the, the extra jumbotrons up there, and, and, and the way that sound keeps gets locked in there is unbelievable, uh, the electricity that's in there. And, and I know our kids felt it. Uh, especially the ones that played last year, just to see it and, and feel that electricity, it's so much different and it, it's an amazing atmosphere. Man, Sarge Nation, how y'all doing, baby? Putting on the show, first opener, home game, let's go. Man, look, it's first game day in the vault. It's a new stadium. The fans out here, we're going to put on the show. I wish I could play with these boys, but I'm going to root them on to the fullest, represent. Hey, hotty toddy, baby, let's get it. You know, it was a short week. You know, we played on Monday. We're getting ready to play on Saturday. Uh, you know, coming together as a team, being locked in. We go week to week preparing for each opponent. You know, we look at each opponent the same. Uh, I have the same mindset every game, just go in there and try to dominate. And then obviously a team like Wofford, where they run triple option, you really got to uh, do your job. And everybody got to stay disciplined in doing their job. Control your eyes, all right, and do your job. Don't fall asleep, all right? You're going to crack, crack, crack. All right, it's going to be a cracking go, right? He's gonna run it, run it, run it, run it. Why was he gonna come off for your job? Next thing you know, it's gonna be like a stalking go. Alright? Do your job. Quick pass to the far side. It's caught by Jefferson. Makes the first man miss. Head to the sideline off a of block. Kelly's gonna fire right to the right seam, a little quick hitter to Evan Ingram, and Ingram has the catch, and he'll get inside the 30. Wonderlich's kick is on the way, and it is good, and the Rebels take a 3 to nothing lead here in Oxford. Our goal is always to get off to a fast start. You know, we go up tempo and everything, and it just, you know, felt real good to be able to start that way instead of having a slow start and work our way up. Touchdown, down, hand it off to Judd. Give it to him right now. Feed to one. Feed to one. Hand is to Judd, he starts left, he comes back to his right, looking for a block downfield, he's to the 45, the 40, working the sidelines and pulled down at the 36 yard line. First down, Ole Miss, every play, every play. They only bring four, Kelly lets it go to the sideline, caught! Flag on the play and the touchdown pass to DK Metcalf. I think this is coming back, he got a hold here by the left tackle. Yeah, that would have been the second catch and the second touchdown for DK, but it all comes back. Empty set here for Kelly. A little bit of a high snap from Connors. He fires down the right seam. Got Pack caught to the 10 to the seven yard line. First and goal. Ole Miss. Markel Pack ran a go route. And there's a fake handoff. Pass near side. Pack steps in the end zone. Touchdown. Ole Miss. I was just thinking, oh, he's about to the pull this and throw it to me. So I, I kind of looked up field and then I saw my string was blocking for me and I just I just knew I was going to get in. I'm excited when any of my guys score. I, I really am because that's what we talk about. We talk about being a difference on this offense. He keeps it. They account for the quarterback on the run, but that's the last option. Chad Kelly decides to go to Pack, who's excellent with the ball after the catch. That first one's always, you know, you got butterflies. You're always eager to get that first one. And then, you know, once you get it, it's just relief.
Kelly's going to hand it off. And there goes Eugene Brasley. He comes to the near side to the 20. He's got a blocker in front of him to the 15 and knocked out of bounds at the 10. Nice downfield block by the freshman receiver, A.J. Brown. I throw it to D.K., Chad. Hey, you got to throw it to D.K., Chad. That was good, Two freshmen let him put two on the board. Here's the snap. He's going to throw the end zone. Right corner. Metcalf hauls it in. Touchdown. Oh, man. D.K. Metcalf. Had one taken away earlier on a hole. This time, no flags, and Metcalf has two catches, two touchdowns. The handoff to Judd off the right side. Breaks the tackle, turns it downfield to the 30. Still on his feet, knocked down at the 25-yard line. He'll gain 13 on that one, and some option from Ole Miss. Hakeem Judd, slippery. Finally gets up in it after a gain of 10 by Jaleel Green. Of his game, watch him on film, and you see the same exact things that you're seeing today. Takes left, pumps, fires over the middle, has got his man caught there by Quincy Adaboyjo. A touchdown for Ole Miss. Chad Kelly's seen this game like a Heisman Trophy winner. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that Cedar Hill, boy. You see it. The toughest part of stopping a triple option offense is the triple option offense. Being a scheme based on deception and misdirection, it can cause havoc for the opposition. But the Landshark defense was up for the task. Big stick on Nick Colvin from Zedrick Woods. Hello, Mr. Woods. From the 25, first down, the snap to Butler. He's going to pitch it to the long sweeping right. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. No gain at all. We got to stop the run, and that's like the number one thing. And everybody got to stay on their assignment. One got to take the quarterback, one got to take the dive in, and one got to take the pitch, man. Nobody's on the quarterback. He's going to bust that one and take it to the house because everybody got a certain assignment. And if nobody's on to the pitch, man, he can just take it to the house, whether it's first and 10, second and long, or third and long. Like anything can happen within any play. If it was me being out there, it looked kind of confusing of who can get the ball and which way it's going and different things like that. But our defense did a good job of making sure they knew where that gap was and different types of things that they know on defense to do. He faces the fullback. Option near side. There's a pitch. There's absolutely nowhere to go for Will Gay. The Rebels just smothered that one. Butler trying to change direction, and he gets swallowed up. Ole Miss smelled the blood in the water, and Victor Evans gets after him for a loss of three. That's how you get 11 hats on the ball. Great job, man. Got a way to run, keep there, that ball for you get there, physically finish. A commanding lead in a non-conference game often provides an opportunity for younger players to get valuable reps. Back to the running game, and inside the five goes Eugene Brasley, gain of 12. On the left hash of the three, first and goal. There's a snap, keeps it himself, runs straight ahead, touchdown, Ole Miss! It's Pellerin that takes it in on his own. To get those guys that uh, normally you don't read about in the paper, getting the, those guys in to, to get some playing time, it's awesome because they deserve a right to get out there and show what they can do. It's making sure that we have depth, you know, making sure that, that we can have guys to come in and that they can go in and do their job. Mac. I see you, Willie. You can never have enough points. And now here comes the blitz, and Brown's open. They fire it to him, and he's going to take it in for an easy touchdown. Ole Miss. There's the handoff fullback fumble. It's popped up in the air and loose on the ground. Rebels think they have it, and they do. Abear with the recovery. Jordan Abear, the sophomore from Bryan, Texas. Big fella getting some playing time. I was right behind you. I was going to get it. <laughs> and the Rebels get their first win of the year. Next up, it's going to be Alabama. We had to protect the new stadium, you know. We just came out here and gave the fans a show. We got our first win of the season. No, hey, to get everybody back healthy, get everybody back strong. We got Alabama coming. We got a different beast coming here next week, so we got to get back, rest tonight, enjoy the win, and just come back ready to work and take down Alabama. There's, there's a lot of positives, man. A short week. That's a, that's a good one, double 18. Short week to come out and take care of business. Got a lot of people in, that's always exciting for us. Man, protect this team. Let's keep building off of this win up until next week. Got a huge task, get an opportunity to play the number one team in the country at our place. It'd be a phenomenal atmosphere. You should start envisioning how that looks. Protect this team, get in here tomorrow, clean your lockers up, be a pro about everything you do. Celebrate with each other in the good times, man. Life is tough at times, so you celebrate the good times. Congratulations, man. Got back to one and one. 
Now let's go get in this, let's, let's go make some noise next Saturday, all right? Oh man, glad to get a win in, uh, in our home opener of the new improved uh, Vault Hemingway. Uh, I believe that's gonna be a nice place to play in on a, on a Saturday evening or a Saturday afternoon in one of these SEC rivals that we'll have. Before he goes down with the injury, it was his second touchdown score in as many weeks that he become somewhat of a red zone favorite for Chad. He absolutely is a red zone. Uh, we, we really felt good about him in the red zone. I didn't even see that coming. I mean, it, it hurts us, hurts me and hurts us as a receiving core to lose one of our brothers, you know? The good thing is he, he he's going to come back, and I know he's going to come back bigger, faster, bigger, stronger, all that good stuff. It's important for us to come out here and play as a team and get the W. Hey, got the first win. We got that took care of business against a very good team. Hey, get ready for Bama this week. It's a different mindset now. Now we got to get our minds right, you know. We go deep into the SEC this uh, next few weeks, but we got it at home, so it's a good thing to have the number one team in the country to come come here and play them here. We needed that one to bounce back, Florida State. We got a big game this week, though. Alabama will be ready. This is going to set the tone for the rest of the season. You know, we come out there and do what we're supposed to do and meet them. We're going to have that confidence going into the rest of the season. We just got to play our game. It's as simple as that. Let's start tomorrow gets real because we got them boys uh, from Bama uh, next week and it's going to be fun. So that's, we're going we're gonna to attack this week and uh, y'all get ready for a show next week. Relive your favorite episodes whenever you want. Purchase your copy of the season Ole Miss football on DVD or Blu-ray at theseasondvd.com. Be sure and pick up your copy of this week's game program this Saturday at Vaught-Hemingway Stadium, which features senior quarterback Chad Kelly. And make sure you download the Rebel Rewards app to unlock exclusive augmented reality videos on Ole Miss posters, game programs, and more.